Today we're going to be installing the Aquatrol water softener from US Water Systems. It's called the 56SE. Um, before we get started, I want to talk about packaging. Typically all of our water softeners are packaged the same way. You're going to have a resin tank and the inner distributor tube will be inside the tank with the resin tank. Then you're going to have a brine tank and in this brine tank is going to be your control valve, your brine line, your instruction manual, funnel, things like that. That's the same way we package all of our softeners. Now when it comes to resin, it'll vary a little bit. Um, when you get a full cubic foot of resin like this, it'll come in a much larger box. But if we have to give half portions, let's say if you bought a, a 1.5 cubic foot unit, then you may get a smaller box with just a clear plastic bag and resin in it. Um, it won't have any labeling on it or anything like that. Now keep in mind, we don't send extra resin. So if you get two big boxes and a little one, then that's intended for all of it to go into the tank. Okay. So like I said, when you get that, if these bags are busted or whatever, try to quantify how much you know, you've lost and things like that. We can make a determination on whether or not um, you, need, you need more. It doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while, you know, they get a little rough with these and a corner might come loose and you might lose some resin. But um, typically they're going to be in one cubic foot or half cubic foot boxes. So once we've done that, I'm going to put this resin to the side, but we're going to take the tank out first so we can talk about the tank. Let me grab my knife here. Be a foam cover and a plastic bag on the top. Let's pull this out of here. You have your mineral tank and you'll have your distributor tube. Now on the end of this distributor tube it'll have a cone with perforations in here. This tube is what isolates the resin from the water flow. So it's crucial that this tube is not broke, cracked, or, or that we don't have a big hole in this. So I always inspect this because in shipping you don't we don't know what could happen. I mean, if this thing bounces around, it could, it could have broke the tip of this off. So it's a good idea to look at this, make sure it's okay, and then put it back in the tank. Now, when you put this back in the tank, if you don't have it exactly in the center, you can see where it'll actually protrude the top. When it's exactly in the center, there's an indentation in there that allows that cone to fall in, and you'll know it's there because once it's there, then it's, you see it's exactly flush with the top of the tank. But that's really important to do that because you want to make sure that, that that is in the center of the tank when we start to fill it with the resin. Now, the next step to filling it with the resin is to put a piece of duct tape across here. So we're going to take a little piece of duct tape. And this is to ensure that resin doesn't get into this center distributor tube when we're actually filling it. Because anything that gets in this center distributor tube is going to go right out to the home plumbing. So if we was to get resin in there, then it would end up in a, in a sink faucet or it would end up in a um, toilet valve, something like that. So once we have this centered and taped off, now we're going to open up our brine tank so we can get our, our funnel out of there. Control valve is in there first. We'll sit that down for now. We'll come back to that. And we got the funnel here. We're going to use that now. So once you have this taped off, we're going to put the funnel in there. And then again, you're going to pour all the resin that was sent to you. Now I'm not going to pour this resin in here, but uh, typically you would cut this bag and you're going to pour it in here and it's good to have a helper to kind of hold this so it doesn't cock one way or the other and he can also kind of shake that or she can shake that that'll allow that that resin to, to center in the tank. Um, when you're filling this it's a good idea to have safety goggles and even a face mask on it. Um, these are non-toxic of course but they're really tiny beads if you get them into an, a tear duct or something like that it could be pretty painful I'm sure I've never done it but it, I'm sure it could hurt so um, Goggles and a face mask is recommended. Also, sometimes you can get a little bit of a, 
a haze or a dust cloud as you're pouring this. So if you want to have your helper hold a shop vac in the area, it'll kind of pull that dust to the shop vac as you're filling. Um, it's not as bad on resin, but if you're doing other things like carbon or something like that, then it's definitely a good idea. Otherwise, you end up with a black haze on everything in the room. So. Um, once you've filled the tank and you're completely done, you can remove the funnel and you can keep this funnel for future um, resin changes. You know, it's probably be 20 years, but I mean, you can use it for a lot of different things. So keep the funnel and then we're going to remove the duct tape. And I usually leave a little ear on here just so it's easy to grab and you can kind of just tear it right off. Now once you get it tore off, just make sure there's no glue remnants left on there because you don't want that impeding the seal, which I'll show you in a minute. So now that we've filled the tank with resin and we, you know, we've shaken it and it's kind of settled, then we're going to put the actual control valve on it. So let me open up the control valve here. Knife again. In the control valve, you'll have your upper basket, your actual owner's manual. Put that to the side. The main control valve. You'll have your brine line connection package. And you will have your transformer to power up the control valve. We're going to leave these two items in the box for now as well as the manual because we won't need them yet. But we're going to need this right away so we're going to leave this out. We're going to unpackage the, the actual control valve here. This is just a protective cover on the front. front we can re remove. Now on the bottom of the control valve there's two different O-rings. This center O-ring seals around the distributor tube that we had tape on. And then we also have an outer O-ring here that will seal on this nylon flange on the top of the tank. We want to make sure that these two O-rings are lubed up, so we're going to use some food grade silicone grease. Um, you can buy that at your local hardware store or if you don't have that, you can use vegetable oil or corn oil the same way. But don't use Vaseline or anything petroleum based. Um, these O-rings are not made to take that type of grease and they'll actually swell. You'll have a leak, you'll have to buy new O-rings. So make sure you use food grade silicone grease, corn oil or vegetable oil. This is actually the grease that we sell online. You can find it if you just, if you put in silicone grease in our search engine. Um, we sell a couple different size tubes of it. But you know, you don't have to, you can use it for a lot of different things. So I'll take a little bit on my finger and I'm just going to get this inner O ring lubed up. We're going to get a little bit more on my finger and we'll go around this outside O ring and make sure it's got a nice layer of grease on it. Now, once we have this greased, we're going to want to put this upper basket on. This upper basket keeps the resin from being blown out during a backwash. Um, after the initial startup, it really doesn't serve that much of a purpose. Um, it's because the resin will become saturated and kind of too heavy to push out of there. But if you ever have other problems, such as a, a burst of water pressure or let's say sediment gets in here and starts to displace the resin, this will keep the resin from coming out. So you're going to put this in, there's slots and then you turn it to lock it in place. There it goes. Now we're going to put this control valve on the tank. You see the hole in the bottom of here is what we're going to put over the distributor tube. Allow it to come down and put flat on there and then start to screw it in. Now this should screw in easily by hand. If it, if it doesn't and you have to start really forcing it to screw it in there, you probably have it cross-threaded and you need to check everything again. But you can see it spins in there pretty easily once the threads are in there properly. Now, 
once it's in there and tight, I usually take the paw in my hand and just wrap it a couple times on here just to snug it. Because you don't really want to use tools on this because you can break it being plastic. But also, it doesn't need to be super tight. I mean, there's, there's an O-ring in here that seals this. So it's just a matter of getting that O-ring to, to smash out and seal all the points. So once we've done that, now our softener's pretty much prepared. Um, now it's up to us to decide where exactly we're going to put it. Um, there's three things to consider. First of all, you want to treat all the water you can, including the hot water. Um, you don't want to treat the outside spigots or irrigation system. If you don't have a choice and you have to treat that water because of where you have to put the softener, then we have a bypass valve on here that you can actually bypass the softener when you're doing outside irrigation. But um, preferably that outside irrigation would be plumbed in prior to this. Um, most of these are going to be at the point of entry of the home, either after a well pressure tank or after the city water meter. Um, and again, your irrigation outside spigots plumb off beforehand. Then you'll go into your water softener. That way you capture all the cold, cold water of the home and all the hot water of the home as well. Um, the other things to consider is you're going to need a 110 outlet to be able to power it up but you're also going to need a drain spot. Um, this drain needs to be able to take anywhere from 2 to 10 gallons per minute depending on the size of your softener. This one cubic foot unit is 2 cubic or 2 gallon per minute backwash. So um, it's pretty easy. Uh, most drains are going to take that, but if you get into larger systems with a larger backwash, you may have to beef up beef up a drain to be able to take that kind of flow. So um, the system itself will come with a barb fitting this is a half inch barb and we have tubing on our site that's 5 8 OD half inch ID that you can run for a drain. The drain line is not included with the system. The drain line is going to vary depending on how so it'd be hard for us to give you the right length. So that's something that we leave up to you to decide you know how long you need the the drain line to be and you can purchase it yourself. You can also purchase it locally. Um, the other thing is the connections. Today we're, we're going to use these flexible connectors to install this because it's a lot easier for me and in quicker video than if I was to use solder and, and, and copper tubing. But um, we sell these on our website too. There's a 24 inch and 18 inch models for this and these make your installation really easy because with these quick connect fittings you can literally just cut the pipe pop this on there and then now you have your connection point for your water softener. So these are these are really nice for the DIY person because it, it can make the, the the installation go really, really quick. And the only tools that you're required to have is a decent plumbing cutter and then maybe some emery cloth just to, to clean up the edge so it doesn't cut the O-rings here when you push it on. But um, Today we're using, we have PEX here, our in and outs are PEX just because that's, we, we test here a lot so we use PEX, it's easy to work with, we can cut it off if we need to, if we have a leak and things like that. So um, the first thing that we would do, like I said, is we would place this where we know we have the, the three things we need, the power, the, the closest water source, as well as the drain. Um, this particular area is set up for that just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to plumb in the in and out connections. Now what I want to show you here, as you can see here, it says in and out. And there's an arrow that points towards the unit for in and an arrow that points away from the unit for out. So when you're plumbing this, make sure you plumb it properly. Your incoming water would go in the inlet and your outgoing water to the home would come from the outlet. So that's how we're going to plumb this in today. So I'm going to push my inlet tubing on my inlet pipe and then we're going to bend this so it fits the connection point on the back of the softener. Now the 56 SE Aquatrol is going to come with three quarter inch male threaded nipples here so you'll need a female pipe fitting or in this case, the female flex connector. I'm just tightening it hand tight for now and we'll come back and snug it. And now we're going to do our outlet piping, which is on the bottom here. And twist it around. Also, too, if you're using these, make sure your 
rubber o-rings in here. The rubber o-ring is what does the sealing. That's why I'm not using any Teflon tape on these threads. Now, if we were using a copper fitting, we would have to Teflon tape these threads in order to make sure that they don't leak. Spin that up snug. And then we'll take our channel locks, snug it on up. Now, once you have your two connections snugged, make sure your unit's in bypass. You want to come around here so I can show bypass. Bypass would be the two handles. Bypass would be these two handles facing each other. Um, once you know you're in bypass, we're going to put water to this just to check all our connections here and make sure we don't have any leaks. So we're going to turn the water on slow. This also flushes out any debris, plastic or solder or anything that we may have in there during the plumbing process. So once we've fed the system with water, we verified we didn't have any leaks and the water ran clean, we shut the, the faucet off. Now the main water is going to remain on here. Um, we're going to leave it on until we get ready to start up. So now once this is done, the next thing I like to do at this point is go ahead and hook the drain line up. Um, it's usually the next next thing to do um, in, in your process. So I'm going to grab some drain line real quick and we're going to get it installed. Hang on one second. Once you have your drain line in place, then we can go ahead and we're going to push it on the hose barb. And we're going to add a clamp. Make sure you don't have any kinks there. We're going to tighten the clamp down. And that's the drain line installed. Now, one final connection is going to be the brine line. You can see this brass nut right here. We're going to use this brass nut in conjunction with the brine line and the seal pack that's in the brine tank. So I'm going to pull that stuff out of here. Now, in your brine tank, you'll have this brine line. Go ahead and pull that out of here. And you can see in the ends, there's these little brass inserts. These, is what, these are what we use to stiffen the end of the, the actual tubing to allow it to make a good connection when we tighten this nut down. So we're going to uncoil this. Then we're going to take the nut off the side of the unit here. We're going to slide the nut over one end first. And then inside your pack here, you'll see you have a cone screen, another insert, and the actual ceiling ferrule. This insert, this, this one here, is just extra if you need it. Um, in this case, we have them both, so we don't need it. But we can always keep it in case we ever have to take this loose and happen to drop one or something. You can have it and keep it in your toolbox or your drunk drawer or whatever. But we're going to get the little plastic seal out of here and you can see on the seal that we actually have a flared cone shape. We want this flare to face the valve so we're going to put it on like this. You can see that. And then we're going to take the screen and it fits right into the end like that. 
Now we're going to push the whole tube in the brass fitting until it stops and then we slide the nut up and start to tighten it down. Now this nut should spin up easily with your fingers. If it's hard to turn, then you probably have it cross threaded and you want to back it out and, and check it because if not, this fitting is not easy to replace and a pain in the neck. So make sure you get it threaded correctly and then we're going to snug it up. Now, don't be afraid to snug this. I snug this at least a full turn because I don't want this to come loose. I can tell you that 99% of all softener problems is because this line becomes loose or plugged or something in the brine tank becomes loose. Very rarely is there ever a problem with the resin or the control valve. It happens, but rarely. Most of the time, the, the water gets hard and it's because something's wrong with this line. So um, these will vibrate when they backwash. So this, if it's loose, it can work itself loose to where eventually it's loose enough that it when it's trying to pull in salt solution to regenerate, it just pulls in air so it never regenerates properly. So make sure you get that tight. Um, now we're going to install the actual brine tank. We'll take the lid out for now. We don't need it yet. And then I want you to see down in here, there's a white tube in here. We call this the brine well. If you take that cap off the top, and you can see you have what's called a brine safety float in here. This brine safety float has another nut on it that we're going to screw out of here. And we're going to be real careful not to lose the sleeves in there. There's multiple sleeves in there. So I'm going to show you that. But first let's take our brine line and we're going to run it through the hole in the side of the brine tank and in the hole in the side of the brine well and then we got to put the nut and sleeves on it. So I'm going to put this nut on there and hopefully it pushes the sleeves out so I can show you this. Yeah. Okay, so we got the nut on there and then there's two sleeves in here. One of them has a little split in it and it's cone shaped. This sleeve is intended to be like a lock washer to lock this so it can't back off. So when you put this on you're going to put it on just the opposite as the other end of the brine. You're going to put the, the cone towards the, the nut, okay? And then this is what we call the shoulder sleeve. This is the actual sleeve that seals the water. It's going to go on with its widest part touching the widest part of the cone split ring, just like that, okay? With the nut being on there too. So what you're going to do now is once you have these on there, be really careful not to lose them and drop them in there because it's tough to get them back out. You got to dump the tank over and everything. And so once you get that on there, we're going to push that tube all the way in until it stops. We can push our sleeves on up and then we'll start tightening the nut down with our fingers. And we get this tight as we can again with our fingers. And then we're going to go another almost full turn with the channel locks. Because again, you don't want this thing to come loose. This will be what causes all your problems. Okay. And once we have that nice and snug, then we can take our cap and we'll put back on. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to fill this tank with salt. Um, if you don't have enough to fill it, that's fine, but you want to fill it to where it's just below the bolt in here. Um, the idea is to fill this with salt, use all the salt, and then refill it again and use all the salt again. Um, if you top it off every week, you'll end up with a big hunk of salt that doesn't want to dissolve properly. So it's better to fill it up, use it all, fill it up, and use it all. So once you put your salt in here, then we're going to take five gallons of water and pour in with the salt as well. That's just to displace the check valve and, and ensure that we have enough water in there for the first re generation, regeneration. So once that's done, you've got your water in there, we can go ahead and put the lid on it for now.
and the next step now would be to start the system.